Hi guys. We got another home improvement project for you today. This is an outswing hidden door bookcase that will get you into this attic space that we've had in our home. Uh, we can't do an in swing because we have an eave here. Uh, I built one of these before. I'll link to the other video. This has incorporated some of the learnings from last time. Come along and see how we built it. Step one is to take this off and see what we're dealing with as far as the opening. Okay, so old house, 1940s, and kind of as expected, we probably have some issues here with the construction of this frame. Uh, I don't know how square it is just yet, but we know that it's not centered here between these two walls in the hallway. Uh, we're a lot closer on this side than we are on the other. Uh, so we may need to add to this jam on the one side to kind of make it uh, so that it looks centered here. Let's get to work. I've made a template for the size of the bookcase. I just want to make sure with these hinges that they uh, allow the bookcase to swing without uh, hitting the frame. And so I've got a nail for the pivot point here and created this template. And so I'm able to see uh, how it fits in the opening and uh, at the top of the opening as well and I'll use this to line up the hinge that we're going to use the very special hinge I'll leave the link down below on Amazon but uh, I've marked out for where the hinge is going to be and used a nail for where that is going to pivot and that let me uh, kind of rough out the dimensions of the bookcase so now it's time to go and uh, start cutting some wood. We'll get started by breaking down some three quarter inch plywood to make the frame and the shelves. So we got uh, half a sheet of three quarter inch plywood broken down. The top, the bottom, three shelves. And then for the sides, I've got a 14 inch wide board that I'm gonna cut dado slots in and then separate into the two halves. So uh, the dados match on the left and the right side of the cabinet. So time to cut some dados. Thank you. 
so now we got the dados cut. Time to split the two sides. All right, now we'll trim the top and the bottom to the width of the cabinet. Now we'll cut the three shelves to width, remembering the depth of that dado we cut. All right, everything's cut. Let's see how it fits. Dry fit looks good. Time to uh, put in some counter sinks and screws and then uh, put the back on it. just checked and it's square so now we're ready to cut the half inch plywood for the back So there's two corners we need to round over to allow space for the hinge so that this doesn't hit the frame of the door. So this one on this back corner that's closest to the hinge side and then the front corner that's opposite the hinge uh, to allow it to pivot uh, away from the trim. You'll see later. Okay, so now we're ready to use my template and mark 
for where the hinge gets installed here on the bottom and the same thing on the top. Okay, so the way this top hinge works is it's a retractable pin. What you do is install this up in the door frame and when it's installed, you have access to this screw and that re retracts the hinge pin using this lever. And when you install the door, then you tighten this up, it drops the hinge pin down and that's what the pivot of the door is. And so the matching part, this part, sits in the door itself. Now the problem I have with this is that I've got a three quarter inch plywood frame here and this would stick through into the body of the door. And there's no real way to conceal that I could install more plywood under there to kind of hide it, but it's a little bit of a hokey fix. So what I've decided to do is to trim this off to just uh, under three quarters of an inch so that I don't need this pin to go all the way in. In fact, it's not long enough to make it all the way through the plywood anyway. So to recess this, I just need to uh, trim off about a quarter of an inch of it and then it'll be a blind hole and I won't be able to see it from the underside of the cabinet. So let's do that. So there we go. That is trimmed off and will now fit inside the three quarter inch plywood top of the bookshelf. And then this will come in from the top and not have any problem engaging enough to uh, hold the top of the bookcase. I think it's a real good solution. Now the last thing we need to do here is drill a very small hole. This will be uh, visible from the inside, but this is what's going to allow us to stick a screwdriver through and to be able to withdraw that uh, upper hinge pin on this hinge. And I'm thinking my smallest screwdriver here is what I want to reach through to be able to adjust that. So I just need a drill bit that size. So I don't think you'll see that at all from the inside. So the next step is to install the hinge hardware in the bottom of the door frame and the top of the door frame. So this guy's pretty easy. That's just a 5 8 uh, drill and pop that down in. It's got a little ball bearing that the hinge rides on. On the upper, it's a little more complicated because you have to mortise out for all of this gear that is up hiding up above in the door frame. So uh, let's get at it. time for the upper Let me show you how this fancy upper hinge pin works. 
So this is as we will be installing the door, which is that the pin hangs down here about an eighth of an inch and the set screw. This is gonna be accessed through the bookshelf, that tiny hole that I drilled. It's gonna hit the set screw. And as we tighten this, the hinge pin is gonna descend into the receiver on the top of the cabinet. Then it'll be able to operate. If we ever need to remove it, be able to reach back up through that hole in the upper cabinet and then undo that screw, retracting that pin. I think we're ready to grab the door and test fit it on these hinges. Fingers crossed. fits in the opening. Let's see how that hinge works. Okay, test fit is complete. Everything is looking good. So now we can take this back out in the shop and do the final glue up. We'll also add the right side trim here. This is going to be the door stop that uh, uh, travels with the door. Now the rest of the trim, the left side will be attached to the wall and then the top and bottom will be attached to the wall as well. So really the only trim that gets added to the door part is here on the right hand side. Once we've added that and glued this all up, uh, it's ready for paint before we bring it back in the house. And then the rest of the trim will be added once it's back here in this opening. Let's go cut some trim. Okay, so we got a coat of paint on the bookcase, uh, but I still have some more trim to cut. So I got some half inch ply with it I'm going to use for the trim. Paints up real nice. Uh, trim is two and a quarter inches wide, and so I've got uh, some sides and some top molding to cut. Uh, so let's get to it. <laughs> All right guys, I'll show you one more time how this upper hinge works, because this is really where all the magic is. Uh, we've got a set screw here, we've got the hinge pin itself. This is retracted, so you see that it's sticking out about a quarter of an inch on both sides. This allows us to fit the bookcase into the opening. Once it is, I'll stick the screwdriver up through that top shelf, through the hole we drilled, and then we'll turn this guy clockwise, and as you see, the pin comes down locking the bookcase into place and that's how it's going to be hinged is right there and there is our door. So now all we got to do is trim it out and we will be done.
Okay, so take a closer look at how the trim works on this guy. So again, on this right side, opposite the hinge, it's attached to the bookcase. So it travels and it acts as the door stop. So as you close it, boom. Uh, up top, this upper piece is attached to the wall. This is attached with screws from the underside. This is that uh, kind of craftsman style looking deal there. Now to remove the door, you have to remove that first. That gives you enough gap to be able to uh, actuate that hinge and uh, get the door out of the way. Uh, the hinge side over on this side stays with the wall. And so as we open here, you see that the door slides back behind this front trim piece. And then down here on the bottom, finally, what we have is uh, attached to the wall and the door hinges over the top of it. And so what you see now in that uh, gap is going to be uh, caulked and then filled uh, and then uh, painted white and so then you'll never notice that uh, that was there either. It's time to install the latch. Now on the previous version of this I did a hinged book uh, which is easy enough to do uh, but we found that maybe the gimmickiness is not uh, completely worth it. So uh, what I did on this one is to just have the same latch uh, but the mechanism is just back here. You pull on the wire and that releases it. And you can just conceal it with a book. Uh, I used the same latch. I'll link to this below that I got on Amazon. I changed the uh, way we actuate it. This is a, a stainless steel braided wire rope. Uh, and then I've got a cable clamp uh, to attach it. The previous version used copper and it fatigued over time and then broke. Uh, and then the reason I've got this paracord here is just in case of an emergency where something about the primary failed, I would have no way to get in here and fix it. And so I just put this on as kind of an emergency backup, uh, which I had to use on the other door when the copper wire broke. So I'm glad I had incorporated that. Uh, you could probably um, change this to be white or something to conceal it a little bit better uh, on the other side here so you don't see that loop. But once again, we're going to have old uh, Harry Potter covering that so you'll never know that it was there. There you go. Thanks again for joining.